Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to the EV Show with Ludicrous Feed. And today is Wednesday, the 14th of February, 2024. So nice of you to join us today, indeed. And before we start the show, I just wanted to give a shout out to all our uh, friends of East Asian Extraction. Happy Lunar New Year. Sinian Kuala, Gong Fa Choi. And I hope you're all enjoying a festive time with your family and friends. Uh, but uh, yeah, tonight's show is going to be fantastic. We're going to talk about EVs as usual. Uh, lots to talk about on the back of... Uh, everything electric on the weekend. So uh, I want to thank everyone who uh, came up and said hello to me uh, during Saturday when I was there. And also thanks for listening to me as well on the panels uh, on the Saturday. So it was really good to see all of you and nice to catch up with old friends and make new acquaintances as well. All right, well, let's uh, say hello to our regular guests as always. So let's bring them on. Gentlemen, we have Riz from Carloop and of course, Rahul as well. Hello, gentlemen. Riz, how are you? How did you enjoy uh, everything electric in Sydney? Hey, Tom, Raul, everyone. Um, yeah, it was bigger than ever. I, I think it's, in my humble opinion, better than the Melbourne EV show. And it was felt like three times as big as last year at ICC. So, yeah, pretty much nearly every car that we can think of that's electric was there. And it felt like a car show, but they had so many other awesome things, which, you know, you covered in your video, Tom. It was awesome. And thanks everyone that came and said hi to us because, yeah, it was good fun. Yeah, it was really good fun. We'll talk about a bit, a bit more about uh, the show later on in the in this show. But, uh, yeah, indeed, it was uh, it felt, certainly felt bigger uh, and more stuff to see and more test drives to take on as well. Rahul, how are you this week? Evening, gents. Uh, yeah, really good. A uh, little bit of a storm uh, uh, incident here in uh, Melbourne, Victoria yesterday. I uh, hope everyone's recovering from that. Uh, and yeah, uh, glad that you two and loads of people in the chat could make it to EE on uh, the weekend. Uh, looks like it was a bigger event than the first one last year. Um, and looks, from what I can read in the chat, going to be an even bigger event uh, in 2025. So yeah, well done everyone for getting there. Indeed. Yeah. Again, we'll talk about that very much, uh, very soon as well, but first let's thank our sponsors as always, uh, on the EV show. We'll thank Riz from car loop. Uh, he's the data King empowering Australia's EV revolution. Uh, thank you to Cobra car insurance. Uh, they sponsored, uh, the EV and media influencer night or EV media and influencer night uh, at 5 30 on Saturday night it was fantastic fantastic I think we had about 90 to 100 guests uh listening to uh, some very very learned guests as well so uh thank you to Cobra for sponsoring that evening and also thank you to Warbox as well for sponsoring the channel and nice to catch up with the guys from Warbox all right, well, we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Uh, our show, a little show is growing. It really is. We're getting a lot of viewers and a lot of engagement. And naturally, we can't get to all of you. So we're going to try something a bit different tonight. And Rahul is going to be our uh, fantastic producer. He's going to be in the studio and uh, looking after all your comments and starring the really good ones. Uh, and well, the, the good ones we can discuss. And me and Riz will certainly whip through them and also talk about some other stuff as well. So... Thank you, Rahul. We'll get you back maybe later on in the show to wrap up as well. Thanks. We'll see you soon. All right. Uh, it's just me and Riz now in the room. So uh, Rahul is in the back and looking after things for us. Uh, yeah, Riz, let's talk a bit more about everything electric. Um, it certainly was a good show. And uh, we got some confirmation there on their X account that they'll be back in March 2025. Now, I, I certainly found uh, it to be... Yeah, more more stuff. I, th I think they also finally found their feet. I think it's now more consumer focused. I think last year there was a bit of confusion as to what kind of show it was going to be, whether it was going to be industry or consumer. But I don't know about you, but I certainly found it was more consumer focused. There were a lot more test drives as well. Yeah, certainly, Tom. I mean, Saturday definitely felt like that because um, Friday was what I would consider more of an industry day. So they found a way of breaking that up a little bit. So there was a lot of a lot of people in the industry that work, plus also, you know, everyday everyday consumers and a few of the listeners and viewers that also attended Friday. Some attended all three days. Kudos to you guys. Um, but yeah, Saturday was definitely more consumer centric, and test drives I think were enjoyed by both industry and consumers. And if next time, then I think it'd be pretty awesome. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I put this comment down here. I said, awesome, good move to hold it after Chinese New Year period is over. I don't know whether that had any impact at all, but, uh, you know, you've got. I guess you've got to find a sweet spot between the cricket and the footy and Chinese New Year. And I think March 2025 might be the sweet spot for next year. So I'm looking mm. forward to that happening as well. Um, before we move on to other uh, uh, stories, let's just say hello to our regular viewers as always. So I've got Jim from Tassie. Hey, Jim, nice to see you there. And Elizabeth has joined us as a new member as well. Thanks very much, Elizabeth. Nice of you to join us. Wayne is uh, watching from Toowoomba. Hello. Uh, and also we have Aaron Crofts. And Aaron uh, coming this week from warm and sunny Melbourne. And I believe Aaron also said hello oh, to me and Riz as well during the show. Okay. Have I dropped out? Hello. Have we lost Tom? Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, you're back. You're back. I'm back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where did I get up to Where, before I cut out? Where was it? <laughs> uh, I think on Aaron's comment. Yes, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron, for saying hello to me and Riz. Really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, yeah, Gaffer says uh, everyone finally rested. Yeah, I think so. We finally caught up with some sleep um, after the show. And Steve's watching from Central Coast. Hello, Jez from well, sunny and warm Melbourne. Uh, and Tazzy Evie says it was fantastic. Heard they are getting on extra space for next year due to more car makers wanting to come and they want bigger stands and not at the back. Yeah, welcome to the politics of car show. Yeah, Riz, I, I don't know. Where, where are we heading? Are we going to, do we need like a, a car centric? Like, do we need all the OEMs at the front of the space? So it becomes like our car show, which we don't have anymore, really. Yeah, it's, look, I personally thought the layout was pretty good. Like, they couldn't have done the test drives at the front. And they tried to keep the manufacturers closer to where the test drives were because that's how you'd book them in. Um, so I, I think they've done well. And also, you know, like it, it's sort of like Ikea, right? To grab something, you've got to go through the whole thing. So to go and grab, look, have a look at the cars, which you can't easily find unless you have a lot of time over the weekends to go and check them out, you have to go through the show. So, you know, I had people that, you know, I ran into the, close to the front and they just, you know, they said they spent the last two hours just going through like three stalls because there was mm. so much to see, but they were there to see cars. And I said, well, you better get out there to the back. So you walk all the way down. And um, yeah, it was, I, I thought it was good. And the venue is much better because of the way it's not a sort of a rectangular sort of layout. It's domes. And then there's like connections between them and you can spread out a bit more. So that definitely helped with sort of crowd control. And, um, but yeah, having cars there and the, the number of cars they had was pretty good. There were a few missing. I think someone in the chat mentioned earlier, where was Mercedes. BMW mm -hmm. had a very big sort of um, stand as well as test drives. Audi was pretty good. You could drive the e-tron um, there as well. Uh, Hyundai had like four or five Ionic 5Ns. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's like half a million dollars just there. Uh, in those four or five cars. I know. Uh, I mean, look, I think Hyundai had a massive presence, actually. They had the truck there, they had the cars there, and uh, they were one of the better showings, for sure. Um, and I thought the test drive area was actually really well organized, I thought. Uh, so, you know, I think, as you said, Riz, it's a dome. There's certainly more space. Uh, it'll be filled in next year's uh, iteration, I'm sure. And uh, for those of you uh, who follow the channel, uh, I actually jumped in with Nash from Tesla in the Gong. Uh, into an Ionic 5N. Uh, so he'll be releasing that video on his channel pretty soon, I think, once the embargo lifts. So watch out for that video. We had a really good time. That's a that's a phenomenal vehicle, by the way. Like, they've managed to recreate a sports car experience in an electric vehicle. Like, they've got revs, they've got paddle shifters for manual uh, transmission, they've got uh, crackles. I don't know how they did it, but it's uh, it's like, it's amazing. And, and just, I, I might share too that I have been invited to their track day later this month as well. So I will be videoing that for sure. And my reaction, hopefully someone will take me for a hot lap around Eastern Creek. So watch out for that video too. All right, now let's take on some more comments. Um, we've got uh, Robin Jules. I definitely met Robin Jules. Hey guys, uh, nice to see you at Electric er, Everything Electric Riz and thanks for your generosity. So yeah, great to see them there. Um, and Jean attended the COBA meet and greet. That was good too. Thank you, Jean. And J.O. says, uh, loving our work, Tom, Riz, and Rahul, watching en route to Sydney from Melbourne. Fantastic. Uh, and V4 says, uh, hey, close to my first EV purchase now. Model 3 of you is premium. I can't decide. I'm in Cairns, so not much in the way of charging network. So I highly recommend checking out my video comparing the two cars. 
but yeah, I mean, it's good to have choice, right, Riz? You know, it's they're both fantastic cars in their own right. Yeah, it's um, I mean, just kickstart 2024, we have these options now, and yeah, we didn't have them last year, so yeah, good for people that are making the choice. And I don't think you can go wrong in with either of those, but obviously, Tom, you've done a deep dive into them, so check it out. Yep, both cars are definitely worth deep diving into and test driving as well, so 100%. Um, yeah, good point, Sensei, about the cost. I mean, look, it is it after a while it does get quite expensive. You've got a whole family, so maybe they can think about discounts for families. And there were like fifty percent off codes closer to date as well. So maybe look out for those coupons next year. Maybe kids should be free. I don't know. Uh, something else we should try next year. Uh, Scott says, "Great to meet us in the flesh, Riz. That was great." Um, yeah, and Kenny says, first show for twenty twenty four." Hey everyone, hello, nice to see you, Kenny. Thanks for showing up um cool all right well uh let's keep those comments going appreciate that guys really really uh great engagement as always we've got five dollars from charlton hey thanks charlton hi from cool and gather just had a new nrma charger open near my work today oh fantastic in cabarita beach new south wales took some photos on plug share that's fantastic uh and gene says yeah at the show there were no separate stands for byd although my car is working very closely with byd these days they had a seal and a dolphin there too um and scott says he drove an audi that's good yes they're good looking cars okay well let's keep those comments coming uh let's move on to the next story riz i'll just share this one real quick and uh, speaking of shows keep the theme going and apparently there's an electric suv dash ute expo in melbourne uh in august later this year do you know anything about this so yes this is a follow-up to the melbourne ev show and this year, it's going to be held in Sydney, and I think they call it the Sydney International EV Show. But Melbourne doesn't miss out. They get the electric SUV and Ute Expo. The only small problem with this title is, I don't know if we're going to get more than two Utes there. Um, so that's, you know, just putting it out there. If BYD and maybe Radar launch, we may have those youths around, but apart from that, the LDV may be discontinued by that stage unless they bring a new version out. So it will just be an electric SUV expo. Or <laughs> well, maybe there'll be a surprise announcement from one of the Chinese brands. I don't know. They must know something we don't because, as you said, there aren't that many choices for youths at the moment for EVs. Well, that's right. So, yeah, that's it's going to be coming up um, three days, which is cool. And... I think, yeah, the Sydney International EV Show should be an interesting one. It will be a bigger than what Melbourne EV Show was last year because, the, as we've just seen with everything electric, it's it's just about to hit off. Like, it's it, it feels like we're on the cusp of something and everybody wants to be part of it. Yeah, the appetite is definitely there. So, yeah, good times ahead. Uh, let's keep going with the comments. So, Sensei says... Um... V, uh, four go with the BYD Seal Premium, bigger battery, more non-Tesla EVSC chargers are coming soon anyway. And I guess the, uh, the Tesla Supercharger Network is opening up as well, which we'll touch on a bit later on too. Yeah, I mean, good choice. It's good to have. Uh, as Tazzy EV says, uh, my car had on Friday two Atto 3s. On Saturday, they had uh, a, a Seal and a Dolphin, which is good. Uh, Oscar Grimmer says, apparently JAC has an electric ute coming as well. Okay. Yeah, possibly. Maybe some of those... Um, Converted Utes too. I forgot the company that makes. Yeah, them. there was the ROEV, and then there was I think even Mevco guys, but they're doing the mining ones. Um, yeah, I, I guess we'll find out. I mean, if Rivian, if you're listening, you know we're, we're waiting. Um, so yeah, we just never know. There could be mm -hmm. more options, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll be waiting. Now, Riz, I'm seeing a bit of chat about um, EV Direct and BYD. I can't help myself. I'm going to put this comment on from Gene. Luke Todd uh, is staying on as managing director and executive chairman. I mean, what, have you heard anything about this? It seems to be quite breaking here. Oh, um, I have heard whispers, uh, yeah. but yeah, Luke will be Luke will be around in in the in the capacity that he's in. Um, but yeah, I believe that there'll be there'll be other other people joining the organisations, and so, quite a few have joined recently as well. Mm, yeah, it's certainly getting bigger. And uh, many thanks to Mark Harlan, if you're watching from BYD. He was on the panel at the uh, Cobra EV meet and greet on on Saturday night at uh, Homebush. So thank you. Oh, Charles has got a bit of a uh, bit of goss for a Cybertruck showing up in Japan. Maybe there'll be one in Melbourne for the this huge show, Riz. Well, I've also heard that there's one going to South Korea. So 
yeah, it's getting closer. Singapore next. So, Darren, if you're watching, uh, keep an eye out for us. And then, yeah, eventually we'll hopefully get one by the time the show comes around. Yeah, I think I think the Cybertruck needs to follow the Taylor Swift Eras show. Like, just follow her around. You know, Australia soon, Singapore. Happy with that. Hey, Kangaroo Island TV. Nice to meet you, Stan, on, on Saturday. Um, he says, just got back to Kangaroo Island today in the Polestar. 3,074 kilometers. Oh, my goodness. Had a great time. Lovely to meet you both and a bunch of others. Yeah. Thank awesome. you, Stan. Great to meet you, too. Okay. Well, let's move on with um, just some more serious news, actually, uh, just coming in from Victoria. So, our Victorian friends, yourself and uh, Rahul included, Riz, uh, seems to be a bit of a power outage across the state. Yeah, it's um, big storms came in yesterday and um, there were some, you know, power plant works that were being undertaken, plus some high voltage transmission lines got taken out. Um, so, yeah, hopefully things are starting to recover and, yeah, it might take a bit of time, but, you know, everyone's got to be patient with it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully everyone's safe and well. Yeah. Yeah, we're thinking of you guys from Victoria in the chat and watching on replay. Hopefully, you're not too affected. Uh, but it looks like a storm was the cause of this uh, of this uh, issue. Physical collapse of six transmission towers uh, near Anarchy this afternoon. That was uh, was that yesterday? No, that was yes. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah. So still ongoing. Um, you've got a Powerwall too, don't you, Riz? In your home? Yeah, I got one a couple of months ago, and uh, yeah, they didn't feel anything different. But I know where my work is, there were quite a few. I think the the work site is still out of power. Mm. So City of Monash and, you know, quite a few other areas got um, pretty hard hit by those storms. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess the, the crew will be working very hard to get things back up and going. So, yeah, I think people have been um, – I've heard stories – that you know people have been using the vehicle to load feature where they can um so yeah i guess evs are starting to you know really make a difference to some people during these events mm. and uh stephen bates has uh used his dolphin to power the fridge and freezer from 6 a.m to 2 30 p.m today so that is a huge benefit of v2x or v2l if you have a car that supports that uh, well, thanks, Jez, for uh, gifting five Ludicrous Feed memberships. So, yeah, if you're a beneficiary, well done. Uh, congratulations. Welcome to the channel. It's good. Um, yeah, so what have we got here? Um, yes, it was a storm that caused it. That's right. Well, let's move on with the next story. And uh, look, Riz, we have been giving RA a bit of a hard time towards the end of last year, but it looks like they've come good. Um, they apparently... Uh, yeah, nine new RAA charge sites uh, are under construction this month, and they're all fast. And did I hear, too, that they've got the highest number of charges per EV in the country, South Australia? Um, possibly. There is some stats being shared at the moment, but I think that um, given the number of EVs that are in the state, um, they, they might possibly have the highest number of charges per EV as such. But it's good to see all of those sites are coming online, and Hopefully the NRMA ones start to uh, bridge the gap where, you know, the RAA ones can't reach, especially close to the border in WA. Mm. So looking forward to both rollouts going, you know, really well and add, adding a lot of sites so people can easily travel um, as the total number of EVs grows across the country. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, well, congratulations, RAA. Yeah, keep up the good work. And uh I don't know whether you heard us last year complaining, but uh, yeah, it's good to see you getting more charges on board. So yeah, that's great. Uh, as Riz said, we uh, definitely need some sort of uh, collaboration between the states. We kind of, you know, disjointed charging networks. We need to have those corridors between Melbourne, Adelaide, Adelaide into the interior, Adelaide to Sydney, those kind of major corridors that need to be serviced by uh, charges. So it's good. And obviously out the west as well to uh, to Perth. That, that is a big challenge across the Nullarbor DC charging network out there. Uh, yeah, Emmett, I kind of agree with you, actually. It's nonsensical to have all these different rapid charging brands rolling out rapid DC charging. So many apps. Like, we do need one app to rule them all, Riz. Yeah, so good point, Emmett. I think the RAA ones will be on the ChargeFox network. So that's a bit of a advantage. 
there's also whispers that NRMA charges will be coming to the Charge Fox app. Um, so that's, I think, a good thing. Uh, maybe that one app rules all might be Charge Fox short term. But, you know, I think RFID cards, which you still need the apps to set them up, but that could be, you know, one card to tap and go sort of a system might be ideal. Um, but yeah, a bit of thinking needs to be done from trip planning point of view. Which apps do you have? How long are you willing to wait? Will you have any reception to download an app if you get there? It's something different. So yeah, hopefully there is enough, you know, that end up on Charge Fox. And EV Networks is doing a great job as well. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll keep an eye out and Tesla doing what Tesla does. So hopefully two or three apps max, but at this stage we'll have to download more. I don't know if you guys heard OTR, which is, you know, part of Viva now, I believe. They've introduced their app with their <laughs> charges. So, yeah, there's another network that's about to go off. Apparently they're going to be the ones that will be rolling them out at Coles Expresses. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Well, look, I, I had this point clarified recently because I, I was sort of leading to the charge providers on LinkedIn to be able to put these cards onto like your phone, right, as, in your wallet. But apparently you need NFC for that, not not uh, RFID. So that's unfortunately, uh, you can't do that, with, especially with the older charges. Maybe the newer charges, you can you could do NFC. But one hack is that you can actually load up a lot of the charges uh, charging providers onto the same RFID card instead of just carrying each one you can just carry one so that's kind of a shortcut around that all I mean ideally you, you want something like in Sydney we've got the yeah uh, we've got um, our train stations with the with the gates you can actually tap your credit card on that which is really really handy you don't have to carry the Opal card anymore so I mean that that would be good if we can do that um, with the newer type charges so we'll see what happens Hmm. Um, let's go through some more comments now. So Tazzy Evies has a quote here. Um, the Australian importer and distributor of BYD cars, EV Direct, has appointed David Smitherman as the company's new chief executive officer. Mr. Smitherman replaces founder Luke Todd as CEO. Okay. Which means Luke Riz probably is in the oversight chairman kind of role, yeah. I would assume. Uh, SWS says our seals saved the BYD seals saved the day a couple of weeks ago when power went out, uh, powered our water pump and hot water system. Hey, that's great. How good is that? 82 kilowatt hour battery. That's like five or six Powerwall 2s. So yeah. maybe even more, seven Powerwall 2s. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yes, so Kangaroo Island confirmed that yes, uh, SA has the most number of charges per capita. RA has done a great job, recorded my trip across regional South Australia using the charges. Good. Very happy. You guys are very lucky in South Australia. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree, Gene. We do need tap and pay with CC yeah. for sure. And yeah, plug and charge plus contactless would be ideal. Surely they've got enough data, Riz. Surely. Apps for like discounts and specials, but surely. Well, this is what it is, right? OTR is now saying that you're going to be offered members only discounts and those type of things within the app, which is, which is fine. Like it's good to have an NRMA has membership benefits as well. That's great. But the app needs to be functional. You can't have like a third party app running in within an app, which is what they end up doing because they're not creating their own sort of charge charge point apps, like ChargeFox has their own. So since they're not doing that and they don't do a very good job at it as well when they buy something off the third party, um, like NRMA, I had a chance to use their app at Mitigong a couple of weeks ago. And there's a lot of swiping and then it doesn't work. So we know ChargeFox works. We know EV Networks app works. Um, if we can, you know, eventually move away from all of these apps, that would be great. But short term, keep a couple of them that work and not just keep rolling out the ones with your membership benefits because that's more of a, you know, membership disincentive to use the app because people have poor experience and so they can't charge their cards, which is what they downloaded the app for. Yeah, exactly. We, I think as EV drivers, we just want reliability. Like that's the bottom line. I want to be comfortable and confident knowing I'm going to a DC charger with my family that's going to work and not be stranded somewhere. So that's number one, two, and three reliability. And I also I can confirm too that I think Charge Fox and NRMA, there, there is something going on. That's I think it's public now. I'm pretty sure they are doing the testing behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, the I've NRMA heard. network is on the Charge Fox system. Yeah, I've heard Carly mention something on her LinkedIn, who is the boss of NRMA Energy or Charging. Mm. And um, so, yeah, it is it is sort of public news. And I had a chance to talk to the team as well, the ChargeFox team. Um, so 
the, at, at everything electric. So, you know, they seem to be coming to all the shows and they want to, I think, find a way of getting other networks on there as well. So I guess we'll find out. Yep. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for joining the channel. That's great. Welcome. Now, Peter Cook, we need more people like you educating the public. Uh, last Saturday, he was at Pheasant's Nest Am Charge, and Riz, we've been there. It's one of the best charges out there, yeah. I think, in the country. Someone was genuinely trying to charge with his ChargeFox RFID card, then the ChargeFox app. I stepped him past install till he scanned the QR on the plug. Yeah, so it's ChargeFox doesn't work for everything, unfortunately. Um, you gotta you got to look at what location you're at at the moment. Oh, Riz, look at this. Uh, John OX says the UK and Europe, they have Octopus Electroverse car that works with dozens of different charging networks, except Tesla, I guess. Yeah, we need something mm. like that. Hmm. Um, unless the cards fit in my digital wallet, it's not going to work for me. Yeah. yeah. Again, RFID, NFC. Just going to have to live with it, unfortunately, for now. Uh, yeah, as Gaffer says, they need to have NFC capability, those chargers that have tap and go. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there's this argument that, you know, it's going to cost too much to retrofit card readers and other things to some of these older hardware. But at least for all the new ones, we should have them. And those that have them, you can't use them. Um, I, I like your analogy, Tom, of Sydney and the public transport system. You know, I mean, it's amazing. You get off the plane and before you know it, you know, I generally don't have the Spectre parked outside. So I have to catch a train to get there. Um, as a high net worth individual, it's always good to know that you can just tap and get in, get on a train. Um, and, you know, I'm pretty sure in Victoria as well, last time I checked, you need a My Key card. I mean, that's another bit of hassle that you don't need. You know, you should be able to land anywhere and get it and be able to charge your car. Um, and it should all just be simple cards that everyone's using and whether it's tap and go, whether it's with their watch or whatever it is. So hopefully we'll get there and, and hopefully it happens within the next two or three years. Yeah, exactly. And and a shout out to Gavin Shoebridge as well, whom I met, um, Kiwi EV in uh, in Sydney. Uh, it was fantastic to meet him finally. But he posted when he when he went home that our public transport in Sydney is actually pretty good. It's safe, it's clean. It's got the you know tap and go with the credit card. And I thought about that and I realized, yes, we are pretty lucky to have that system. It's actually better than Singapore, better than Japan, better than Melbourne where you need the separate cards. So having a credit card tap NFC is pretty good and uh that's the way it should be for ev charges as well uh oz creamer says 7-eleven after discounts on petrol with an app so it's not just evs yeah look i don't mind the incentives uh, woolies is the same thing i've got a woolies app because it gives me discounts sometimes when i go shopping at woolies i'm not advocating for woolies we're not sponsored by woolies but just an example there a uh, question from john ox is card payment enabled yet at tesla v4 don't think we have any V4s technically. We've got Aubrey, which has got the V4 casing, but it's actually still a V3 supercharger. So I'd, I'll have to get Jason from TechAU to, to confirm that, but I don't think it's still enabled at this stage. Mm. Uh, Peter Cook says, NG launched in Australia, uh, entirely integrated into the ChargeFox app. Yep, that's good. Yep. Oh, John. Hey, nice to meet you too, John at EE. That's great. And yes, you're welcome. Uh, for the tickets. Congratulations. And all the guys and girls who won tickets from our last two shows for EE as well. Uh, Gap is confirming they are, I've been testing the ChargeFox and RMA link, guys. Works great. That's good. Excellent. Um, and oh, Jasper, congratulations. Got his uh, ultra red Tesla Model 3 Highland, possibly the first in the Northern Territory. Six weeks to be delivered over the moon. Congratulations. Awesome. Okay, Riz, here we go. Alan Robinson says, Hyundai trademarked the Ionic T7 and Ionic T10 Utes this week. Hyundai are making some pretty nice EVs, I agree. However, it sounds like they're a while off. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. You know, in in um, in the US, they sell this lifestyle Ute called the Hyundai Santa Cruz. I'm, I'm not sure if they're still selling it, but we need something like that. Like a lifestyle electric Ute, it doesn't have to be, you know... Um, it doesn't have to have the four by four capabilities. A lot of people just buy it because it's quieter and it does what they need and they can throw stuff in the back. But I'm not sure what the T7 or the T10s would be like. But for those of you that attended everything electric, they did have the Hyundai Mighty with the tray in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. We just need a Hyundai Tiny Mighty. Um, and, and maybe that's the T10 that they'll launch. Um, and yeah, I, I think Hyundai and Kia, well, Hyundai in particular can do it because they already do it in the US. So we'll find out. Imagine a Ute that looked like an Ionic 5 at the front 
That would be awesome. I would go for that. They're pretty good looking cars. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rahul, thanks for this. Good point by Rahul in the back here in the, in the studio. He says uh, sometimes the apps don't work underground car park. That's true. Uh, that's where the RFID card is handy as well. Um, and Paul says creating accounts in all the apps is a bit of a pain. I know it really is. Um, I've got full, full of apps in my phone at the moment. Uh, I downloaded Everdy today. And, mm. you know, I think it's good, but there's only about five charges that I'm aware of in Melbourne that have it. Exactly. So it, it was an interesting experience because, you know, you plug the charger in and it doesn't, it doesn't tell you that you haven't added your billing details in because it's a completely separate part of the app. So, you know, you put it in and then you're like, why isn't it charging? And then, oh, I, haven't, I forgot to put the credit card details in. You go back into the main screen, put the details in. And then you go back to the charging section and start charging. And I'm like, it didn't even tell me. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, yeah, anyway. That's a whole new stream, isn't it? Talking about apps. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit painful at the moment. Uh, yeah, Sensei, how many people stopped me at EE? Uh, yeah, quite a few, which I'm, you know, very pleased about. Thank you so much for saying hello to me and Riz at uh, EE. It's very touching, actually, especially the people who, uh, pretty much all of you, you know, thanked me anyway. And I'm sure Riz as well for the work that we do. So, yeah. It certainly keeps us going. Very much appreciated. All right. Well, let's keep going with uh, the next story, Riz. And this is an article that you write in The Driven. Uh, yeah. First Victorian uh, Savage customer tests Australian-built electric performance motorcycles. So these Australian-built Australian built EV motorcycles are finally being delivered. Congratulations, Savage. Yeah, it's, it, it looks like it. It's been a long journey. I think it's a couple of years now, and COVID did slow them down a bit. But... They've got it, and you know they've been good in the EV community. They've been at most of the shows. They were at everything electric, showcasing the bike. Um, I think it's a lot of bike for the money, knowing what some of the bike makers charge for their ice bikes. Um, and yeah, it's it's getting out there, which is awesome. And you know, if the test rides are sort of starting to begin, then um, soon, hopefully, there's a media launch, and you know they can get the production ramped up. So yeah, congrats to Dennis Savic, Alexandra, and the team at Savic Motorcycles. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations, guys! Uh, been, been a lot, long time coming. A lot of work has gone into it. We've had them on the stream before. We know how much work goes into startups, and they they are beautiful looking bikes. This is a cafe series type bike they have there, and uh, yeah, it's beautifully done. So congratulations, team! And uh, they are fast, fast bikes. So look out for those on the streets of Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide. They'll be there. Uh, yeah, let's keep going with some of the comments. So Nirav is on, and yeah, he clarifies that um, yeah, the tickets wouldn't have cost that much. There were discounts for sure, and some of the kids' tickets were free as well, as long as they were accompanied by adults. So that's right. And um, yeah, I don't know, Riz, do, do you think they should be cheaper, the tickets for EE next year, or even free? A lot of the trade shows are free, aren't they? Yeah, it's that's an interesting concept. You know, I guess there are people that are able to pay for these tickets, and they do secure them fairly early. And we generally know with most of these shows that tickets do get cheaper closer to the end or they start to hand them out. So those that are, you know, can wait, potentially do save by doing that. Um, or worst comes to worst, you just pay full price at the door type of thing. Yeah. But uh, I think, you know, um, it, it, it's a tough one because they did, there was a lot of value there. There was They could have attracted a whole lot more people for sure. But then... You know, this is a this is a some of the revenue that they collect to be able to throw a show as big as this. So mm. I think you know we commercially it needs to work for them. Otherwise, we will, we won't have a show. Yeah, exactly. They've they've got a big team. They've got staff. They need to fly from Europe, uh, across the world, around the world. In fact, Elliot's from China. He was there, um, and yeah, it was good to have them. They they're very entertaining, very informative, and it's just a good show. So. Hopefully they'll keep coming back to Australia. I had actually had coffee with Elliot uh, yesterday. <clears throat> what a great guy, Elliot Richards. Uh, we sat uh, near where he was staying, and uh, he was saying that Australian the, the place the um, fully charged shows that he's been to so far, uh, the Australian audience, audiences are always the most engaging and the most passionate, which is very heartwarming to uh, to see, uh, even more so than the audiences that he sees in in Europe. So. Pat on the back, everyone. Well done. And uh, keep that engagement up on this show. And he also said our community here is really good, very engaging as well. He is very happy to come back on, Riz. So that's good. That's awesome. 
Uh, cool. All right. And uh, let's at the halfway mark, let's uh, thank our sponsors, Riz, as always. So thank you to yourself from Carloop for empowering Australia's EV revolution, Carloop. Thank you to Cobra Car Insurance for supporting the, the channel, as always. And thank you to Warbox for supplying my Warbox Pulsar Max. Hopefully, you guys watched my video on the Pulsar Max review. And uh, we are trying something different tonight. We've got Rahul in the back uh, uh, studio managing for us. He is our special producer for the night because our audience is getting bigger. I want to make sure we've got uh, enough engagement and uh, chatter as well. And uh, Rahul, after you, you put up, help me put, up, put them up on the screen for, for uh, the discussion. All right, let's keep going for it. Um, uh, let's see, we've got this post here on X, and it looks like the... Uh, yeah, Tom, I think are... your audio is a bit off. I will wait a bit. How about now? I'm getting a bit going. better. Good, okay. Keep talking. Tell me if I am stuttering. You're Good. getting better? Good, good. I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm glad I'm getting better. Um, yeah, let's talk about this. So obviously we had last week the news of the uh, uh, efficiency, fuel efficiency standards uh, filter through mainstream media. Uh, the federal government wants to uh, start a fuel efficiency standard because we and Russia are the only countries left in the de developed world uh, with that one. Uh, three options. They kind of uh, set along the guidelines of the U.S. fuel efficiency standards. Option A is going to be weak, is it weaker than the U.S. current standards. Option B will put us in line with the U.S. standards eventually. And option C will be stronger by 2026. And obviously the FCAI, uh, which represents all the automotive bodies in Australia, uh, autom automotive companies are trying to, I guess, discuss and see what's the best option moving forward. Yeah, that's going to be quite interesting to see how far FCA gets with this. I mean, um, we can understand why they're, you know, sort of against this. But at the end of the day, it's happening. We saw thousands of people come and have a look at these electric cars, you know, hundreds of test drives. People are really, really interested. And, you know, that's what people want. And they want cleaner vehicles. And that's what we need to deliver. Um so hopefully, you know, the consultation period finishes quickly and we can get on with the job and having some stricter rules so that, you know, we don't get every car that they can't sell anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, you know, ultimately they'll probably go with option B. You know, I think that'll probably appease the most people or, or maybe upset the least amount of people. Um, I guess the issue is it's still choice. I mean, we'd love to see option C take off, but... You know, we, we talked about this earlier, the Ute show. We don't actually have the Utes at the moment to mm. offer to those tradies and people who want them. Yeah, and, you know, maybe we need to rethink, you know, while, while we wait for Utes, do some companies out there incentivize in the right way, do they consider electric vans in their fleet? We had the LDVE Deliver 7 that was also at the show, priced at around about $60,000. So, yeah, there's options coming, but... Yeah, we're not there yet, but at least this standard and other things will ensure that we do get there. Yep. It's funny, Utes, isn't it? They really are so popular in the country. Like, I, I personally prefer a van if I was going to haul something. I, I prefer my load to be covered, uh, honestly. <laughs> um, and, you know, as we said, uh, Utes are incentivized in the country. Uh, that's why people have them. Um, I guess it's like a, a nice car with the performance in the front and business out the back. So. And and we've lost the wagons. Remember all those Telstra yeah. wagons and all of those? Like, wagons used to be a big part of the work fleet. They have, you know, light vans, can store stuff and all the rest of it. But we just don't seem to have many options anymore. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that changes over a period of time and many more options do come to the market. So things are changing. I think we have quite a few of the cars that they've got in Europe now. So... Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of those specific ca used cases, which as far as I can see, only the Chinese manufacturers like BYD, like Geely with their radar brand, JSC, those guys will be the ones that will be able to fulfill them because it looks like the US brands can't sort, sort things out in their own country, like the Chevy Silverado or the even the Rivian. You know, I know they're growing and stuff, but it's going to be a while before we see any of them properly in right-hand drive configurations delivered to Australia. Yeah, yep, yep. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll have to attend the Ute and Van show or the Ute and SUV show later in the year is to find out what's, what's exactly going on. 
Well, that's it. Now, Gaffer says he went for all three days of EE and still didn't achieve all he wanted. Uh, they spent a lot of time at each booth. That's good. And Oliver's disappointed not to see a Spectre at the show. Riz, we'll have to get on to RR next year to get on. You know, well, lots of, a lot of high net worth people, I'm sure, walking around. While I've heard, I did see you, Tom. So we have to make <laughs> sure that, that it happens sooner rather than later. I've got $30, uh, not $30 million, Riz. You know that. <laughs> More than 50 cents. Uh, yeah, and Kangaroo Island makes a good point. They do have to pay the bills and run a business. They've got a big team, a um, lot of stuff. I test drive 10 cars. Yeah, exactly. You get to test drive all these cars. You'd have to go to different uh, OEMs and test drive them individually under pressure, whereas this, these guys, they don't mind if you just have fun in the vehicles, right? Well, that's if you can, because I've, I've heard the story where people go into particular brands asking for electric variant and the salesperson says, oh, sorry, you don't want to test drive that. Australia's not ready for them. So, yeah. you know, this is one place where there was, that's all you had. You had the electric variant. So if we could do more of those, you know, I think, I think the guy, what, what the everything electric team's doing is, is great all in one place. And that's, you know, let's say a ticket's 50 bucks and you get mm -hmm. to test drive three or four cars. The amount of time you save doing that in one place, it you know, for some people could be worth quite a bit of money. So I think I think it's a good thing to have everything in one place and hopefully next year's bigger with more test drives and Stan, I guess, was able to test drive ten of them. Yeah, ten cars, that's incredible. I got to test drive or sit in the car I wanted to sit, which is the Ionic five N. That was yeah. that was phenomenal. I still have, have got that memory in my head. It's amazing. Even better with Nash in the front driving me around too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sydney EV, I agree with you. Europe and Asia does fine with tradies and va vans and wagons or shooting brakes, right? So, yeah, why not here too? Um, vans are very, very versatile. Um, oh, Tazzy EV says, saw a Lotus Elytra, bargain price at 200 to 300 k Riz. Oh, yeah, there, the was, there, was, there was a green one there. It was yeah. uh, one of those British racing green or whatever they call it. Um, qu quite nice. Um, but, yeah definitely probably wasn't the most expensive electric vehicle there there were two electric vehicles that were more expensive than that one actually maybe three the first one was the janus electric truck mm. uh, and then there were two electric buses from uh, i think the dennings company or whatever they are so they did have not only cars they had buses and vans and trucks and everything so hence everything electric we just hope there's more youths next year yeah, that's right. And more vans. Speaking of vans, uh, Hal's asking uh, any chance of a review of the eDeliver 7, Renault, Kangoo, and Peugeot ePartner. Seems to be a massive growth Ooh. in the EV sector, in the Oz van sector. I agree. For sure. Maybe we need to do like a test drive of those vans at the Ute. And maybe we should ask those guys to add vans to that list, like SUVs, Utes, and vans, right? Yeah. I think that that's a good idea because, yeah, we do need to make that shift. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we'll keep getting ice suits on the roads. Mm. Indeed. And the stuff they can tow as well. Like, for example, with my Kia EV9, which I still have, they gave me the GT line version. That can tow 2.5 tons brake. That's pretty good. Mm. All right, let's keep moving on with uh, more stories. So, Riz, this is uh, for delivering F-150 Lightning cars in Europe. They're the first yeah. of the units going to a couple located in Norway. Well, that's exciting. They're finally getting them out. I guess left-hand drive, which is still, you know, in the European continent, it's great. Um, unfortunately, it only comes weeks after they said they're going to cut back production of the F-150 Lightning because they think there's no demand or there's less demand than they anticipated. So not sure, a bit of mixed messages, but great to see that they're finally getting out outside of North America. Yep. So there's hope for us yet here in Australia. So there you go. There's a Ute. Maybe we'll see one of those at the uh, Melbourne Ute show. <laughs> um, and speaking of North America, we've got Stellantis, uh, makers of, I think, Fiat, Fiat uh, and others, joining the North American standard Tesla EV connectors from, uh, from 2025. So there's, uh, it's joining a growing list for NACS, which is fast becoming the standard now, which is good. Uh, by the way, we won't be getting this in the Australia. I get asked this quite a lot. So this is a North American standard. We've already got CCS2. They've got CCS1. CCS2 is a uh, more appropriate standard for us here in Australia. 
Um, okay, so uh, moving on, keep going with Tesla news. We've got uh, Tesla filing a plan for a massive supercharger location, 164 stores. Oh my goodness, that'd be the biggest in the world. That's that's like what 10 times bigger than Aubrey, more than 10 times, and that's the biggest we have. Uh, that is pretty cool. Yeah, and this is the kind of stuff we need, like a ground-up EV station, I would have thought. Surely this is all like eateries, you know, uh, stuff, places you can sit down for a bit while your car's charging. So this is what we need to see here in Australia to make it more comfortable to go on a road trip. There you go. All the stuff is now publicly available. 164 stores. We can only dream here in Riz in Australia. Let's keep going with some more comments. So Scott says, uh, Audi was a lazy $290,000. Um, wanted to order one under the name of Riz from Carloop. Look, look, all you had to do is just mention the name Riz, and they would have they would have given you one like Oprah Winfrey. Okay. So no, it was very cool, very cool to see those cars in person because you know, not every day you have to go to an Audi dealership, they may not have one. So for them to be there, that's awesome. Yeah. I think Riz is the coupon code for 2024, isn't it? To get a, a sweet ride. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, Ray says, I'll reach out to the bus companies in Melbourne here and see if I can get a test drive for the BYD R9. Okay, cool. Got a heavy license. Great work, uh, Ray. That's good. Do that for us. Um, and Job says uh, they drove a Tesla Y, BYD Seal, Peugeot E2008, BMW, Audi, e-tron, RS, Hyundai Ionic 5N. Where else can you do that, Justin? Yeah. Where else can you do that? Test driving all these vehicles all at once. That's pretty good value. Hmm. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, yes, Gaffer says we do need the grid serve model. That's right, the ground up EV charging right. stations. All right, um, let's move on to local news now. So we've got Riz's article here in the Driven. Um, so Tesla did quietly add hundreds of non Tesla chargers to its um, EV trip planning and nav screen in Australia, provided you've got the right update and also the maps as well. That means that you can actually precondition your Tesla now to a third-party DC charging site. And we've got examples here from Arm, from X, um, and also I retweeted his post here as well. So this this is him uh, preconditioning the battery going to a BP Pulse in Ingleburn, which is in um, Sydney. So that is a huge development because that's something we've been asking for as well as Tesla owners uh, to be able to precondition your car. That'll make charging faster. Yeah, and also the fact that, you know, we have now ChargeFox, BP Pulse, and I think EV Networks charges on there as well, which is great to see. I believe they don't automatically sort of come as a default charging site when you are trip planning. Let's say you're going from Melbourne, Melbourne to sort of Sydney. These sites won't come up as the recommended sites. But if you wanted to drive to a BP Pulse that was close by to wherever you're going, you could precondition it and put that into your navigation. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm not sure how reliable it is just yet. I think I've, I've been hearing mixed reviews. So you know, some of those third-party uh, devices might still be useful to to, to precondition your vehicle. I did do a test when we drove to the Gold Coast with the Model Y and Model Three, and it obviously it, the preconditioning of the battery does help initially. But once you get to about eighty percent, it actually doesn't matter too much anymore. Uh, they yeah. both start to charge at the same rate. But useful to get to that to that eighty percent, which is good practice for a road trip. Um, and we've got a comment I wanted to put up here. So yeah, that's right. Grid serve. We're talking about grid serve. So let's. Um, I'll show you what we mean by grid serve. Thanks Rahul for putting this up for us. So this is the kind of stuff we want to see uh, in Australia. Like this is beautiful, right? We've got the ground up EV charging station. We've got drive through stalls. If you've got a trailer, hopefully you can just drive on in. And, you know, it doesn't matter which side your charge port is, front, back, side, rear, uh, those cables should be long enough and you hop in that nice place for a bit of food. That's the dream, Riz. Yeah, I guess that it will happen once we, once we sort of get to that 10 to 15% adoption rate, we will start to see these, uh, these type of sites around. I mean, Tesla is already trying with Aubrey being one of the larger ones. And I believe there's some sites with up to 20 charging stalls in planning and development in different parts of Australia at the moment. So that's from Tesla anyway, but for others as well. So yeah, once we get, I think we'll start to see some of them before the end of this year. Mm. 
I mean, look at these sites here. Wow. Norwich, London, Gatwick. Beautiful. Beautiful. As, as I said last week, I am heading to the UK in uh, mid-year. So I'll try and check out some of these for you. Be good to see. Um, just take some more comments. So Sensei saying that electric, uh, everything electric in 2025 is being confirmed at the same venue, Friday 7th, 8th, and Sunday 9th of March, 2025. Fantastic. Awesome. Good time of year. Not so hot as well, heading into sort of autumn. Uh, John has been to the GridServe location at London, Gatwick. Amazing location. Good. Uh, and Tazzy Evie says, yes, GridServe is amazing. That pick even shows the solar roof as well. Uh, plus they have superchargers on site too. Yeah, let's keep showing that one. So that's what we want to see with the solar um, canopies. Another thing they do is you can test drive electric cars there. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, if you scroll up a bit, Tom, I think yep. it's uh, oh, what's yeah. on the left, book a test drive. So you can test drive vehicles from some of their sites. So how cool would that be? You rock up, you charge, and you can test drive two vehicles, you know, in that in that half an hour that you're there type of thing. That's pretty cool. If, they, if this model sort of kicks off, it really sort of creates that network effect around electric vehicles, and people can bring their friends if they're going on a bit of a trip and showcase what other electric vehicles are like. So, yeah, I think we'll get one of these sites, not so much GridServe, but could be anyone, but something similar we'll have by the end of the year. Yeah. I mean, not just test drives. Like, what about haircuts? I wouldn't want a haircut when I'm waiting. Oh. <laughs> foot foot massage, maybe? <laughs> Pedicure, <laughs> manicure? You know, Any, you anything is possible. The possibilities are endless, right? Uh, then you wouldn't mind waiting because you can do something else. I wonder what they do about queuing, though, is during like busy periods. Have they got a sensible system set up? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I, th I think what they have, from what I can understand, they have um, various speeds of charges. So not everyone's charging at the same speed. Um, so, you know, you'll have 50 kilowatt charges, 150, 200, 300. Then there's seven or AC charges as well. So um, I think they've got enough charging stations. But yeah, when it does get really busy, I suspect, given their four courts, they would have staff there. Mm. Yeah, it looks pretty well manned. Uh, Charles, does anyone uh, know someone with a block of vacant land adjacent to a major highway? I'm sure there's some rich folk out there, ultra high net worth people. Yeah, uh, so I think uh, Stocklands and these guys have land uh, in most places that we don't know of. Yeah, just parking, right? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Ray, for your five dollars. Uh, would people be interested in seeing electric uh, outdoor power equipment and construction equipment at FCL EE show? Ooh, that's really expanding their their scope now beyond industry, uh, beyond commercial. Well, that's that's really interesting, Ray. I think there is a show coming to Melbourne, uh, Mobility Live, which is more of our industry trade fleet show, which also has road and construction equipment. So. I think that's either in August or October. Um, so last year was in Sydney. This year it's going to be in Melbourne. Um, but yeah, I mean, if uh, Robert Llewellyn and others are listening, you know, maybe maybe that's a bit of feedback. We'll need some big excavators, cranes, concrete trucks, whatever it is. It'd still be cool to see. Like kids would yeah. come to see that. That's awesome. Yeah, mining, right? Big trucks. They love big trucks. Who doesn't like big trucks? Oh, yeah, I that's where I cannot lie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Sydney Olympic Park is actually a pretty good location for that because there's so much space, right? You can have yeah. it in the stadium next door. There's like two or three stadiums around that area. So, yeah, good place for that. Good suggestion, Ray. I like it. Um, let's keep going. So, yeah, Sensei, let's all move to Queensland, buy big blocks of land, and we can do this live stream in person every Wednesday. Hey, I want for that. Fly me up there. No problem. Um, and Charles says they built them big enough not to have queues. Hopefully, yeah. Or if there's a queue, there's someone leaving. Every... That's true. If you've got more stalls, then you would think the queues would be less. Someone's moving because you're cycling more as well. Very good point. Now, Riz, what was interesting too was that during the COBA session on Saturday, we had Paul Fox from uh, EV Networks explain to us why their prices have increased. Now, I didn't realize this, but they're not, they're not paying wholesale prices. They're paying actually quite high retail prices, not as high as ours, but because they're demanding more even though it's not being used electricity uh yeah. like i think you said 20 percent usage at the moment but even because they're offering so much electricity they're into the next packet and that's why their their rates have gone up which is a bit of a yeah. shame that's just the way it works here in australia 
That is the way it works. So the bigger, basically the bigger pipe you want coming into your charger, which is what they need to offer because a 350 kilowatt charger is 350, has to be able to get that level of supply into the transformers to make it happen. So you're literally buying that and you always pay for that. So you pay that higher rate. Um, so yeah, that's also another interesting part, I think, with EV networks is they say that they're, all the electricity they use is renewable or at least offset by renewables. So they'll be paying a premium for that as well. Um, and yeah, I guess that's the way things are done in Australia. And, you know, sometimes it makes me sort of wonder how does Tesla get away with what they do? Larger sites and huge power. I mean, not every, I don't know if any of our sites, Charles may know better if any of our sites have mega packs or you know, battery storage, which means not as huge of a, you know, sort of wire needs to be coming into the supercharging site. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Tesla will never share that with us. It's probably you know, yeah, yeah. All kept on the wraps, but you're right, Riz, like 16 charging stores in Albury, uh, just like that. I know a lot of years of planning have gone into it, but you've got EV here, you know, celebrating six charging stores in Seven Hills in Sydney. That's their biggest site. Um, and Tesla's got so many. So, you know, what's the deal? Um, and John X says, if the pipe is limited, instead of having two times 350 kilowatt, why not have seven 100 kilowatts? Exactly. I don't mind that. Yeah. 100 is still pretty quick. And most EVs can't take that much uh, speed anyway, apart from the eGMP cars. That's so true. Um, and yes, yeah, Sydney EV is confirming what we're saying, that providers pay for the full rate, uh, even if their car is only using 50 kilowatt hours. They, you know, the, the, the power companies are very conservative in Australia. They want to make sure that there's enough power for everyone. Uh, feedback on uh, ele everything electric for next year. Kids want to see Bob the Builder EV edition. Imagine that, like a little little play area for the kids. They'll definitely come seeing big EV trucks, right? There you go, awesome. free ideas. And Elizabeth says, yeah, I'd love to see more ag equipment like EV side by side, or even just domestic stuff like lawn mowers, uh, you know, electric whipper snippers, bobcats, that kind of stuff. Uh, they did have one ride on mower there, I think, parked. It was green. It was very close to uh, the the Lotus that was parked there as well. So that was also green. Um, so yeah, I think I think there'd be it'd be good to have a larger variety. So maybe um, maybe we'll try and share this link with uh, some of the organizers that we know and say, hey, there's a bit of feedback in the for, from the show and something you can think about implementing if it if it if it works for next year. That's right. And Charles is answering your question, Riz. Uh, I think some X charge Fox 350 kilowatt sites have battery storage, but not sure if any Tesla ones in Australia use it. Quite a few in the US, though. Hmm. Thanks, Charles. All right, let's keep moving on. So um, we were talking about incentives for utes in Australia, but in the UK, um, the UK authorities are closing down that loophole that allows uh, one-ton double cab pickups to pay lower tax. Um, than a company car benefit in kind from this year. So, yeah, I mean, things could change here in Australia as well. Interesting times. Uh, and moving on, I thought I'd share this because we talked about this last week on the show, a Chatamo adapter for CCS. Um, I don't think it's readily, easily available in Australia. I think you could probably buy it through uh, the internet. But... Yeah, I don't think anyone here in Australia has tested it yet. If anyone in the chat has or has one they'd like to test, I'd love to do a vlog on it. But uh, yeah, would be keen to see whether it meets our standards here. Yeah, actually at Everything Electric Show, one of my most favorite cars had a Chatamo plug, the Nissan Sakura that oh, was there. I knew you were going to say that. Yep, yep. Well, <laughs> it, was, it was cool. I mean, it's a lot of money. It was $34,000, but to see... The only one that I know of that I've, well, apparently Anthony from a good car company told me was the only one on the mainland. Um, so, yeah, really, really cool to see it in person. And 34 grand is a lot of money. A couple more grand gets you a dolphin. But for people that are looking for something really, really unique, that was a cool car. Yeah, I agree, Riz. It was such a kawaii little thing. It's, it's so cute. Uh, it's like a TARDIS. Like you think, oh, it's only a small thing, but you can pull the seats back, you can lie it flat. It's pretty cool for a little runabout around town. So, yeah, good on a uh, good car company for bringing it into Australia. So with an adapter like this, then, you know, I guess we don't have to have Chatamo chargers anymore. We just have them all CCS2, right? But it's only got a 20 kilowatt hour battery or something like that. So, <laughs> you know, but no, this, this is, 
this is cool, but you know, I wonder why hasn't this been done before? Mm. I thought it was a like a really, really like there's obviously some engineering challenge there that was very difficult to solve. Otherwise, you'd be handing them out to every Nissan Leaf owner. Yeah, I mean, this is true. We've got Tesla's got the Type 2 to Chatamo adapter for Model SX, but that's for the yeah. proprietary Type 2. It doesn't work with any other car. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, you can engineer anything, right? So maybe it was a proprietary thing. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we've got Charles saying a couple of people in the Leaf Australia Facebook group have ordered them. That's great. Let you know how they go. Thank you, Charles. Much appreciated. Uh, and yeah, Gavin did do a walkthrough of an ag show in New Zealand with plenty of uh, ag equipment. A lot of it was cheaper than the pollution powered stuff. Cool. Oh yeah. That was, um, I think they call it field days. That's where the seal was first sort of introduced in New Zealand before it was oh, introduced yes. in Australia. It must've been. Maybe it was winter, so it must be July, August. Um, but yeah, that's that's cool. Like maybe we need something like that at everything electric as well. But then again, the Kiwis are flying over. We saw Adrian from EV Quest. We saw a couple of other Kiwis that mm. did fly over to the show. So it was. I think they found it was well worth it. Yep, that's good. Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe we could get some of the uh, people from Southeast Asia over to have a look as well. Not that far, right? Yeah. Only a short, short trip over. Darren, yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, Jez, yeah, missing you, Rahul. No, Rahul's being uh, very productive in the back there, helping us out, being our executive producer, uh, helping us out and uh, engaging with you all and finding more articles too. So thanks, Rahul. Uh, we're trialing this new system today. Lots more comments and viewers too. Appreciate it. Uh, and um, Kramer says, I think Riz needs a background of Rahul's face to brighten things up, <laughs> maybe. Where's your Cybertruck? It, it will happen. It will happen. I'm in, a, I'm in an undisclosed location today. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's what's happening, you know. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's move on with this story here. And uh, this I found quite interesting. Actually, one of our viewers um, shared this with me this week. So this is Shell permanently closing all of its hydrogen refueling stations for cars in California. Is this surprising? Well, this is this is interesting, isn't it? I remember about 18 months ago, I went to a Victorian government event where it was all about zero emission vehicles and all that was being spoken about was hydrogen and how we need more hydrogen refueling stations all across Victoria. So mm -hmm. here we are, you know, less than 18 months later, they're being shut down. Norway, Europe's got the same issue where they're shutting them down and this real technical challenges um, that are, you know, making sure that it just, it's not viable. Yeah, look, uh, it's, you know, not the most efficient form of transport, is it, hydrogen? I mean, if you want efficiency, it's got to be renewable energy uh, at the, at the so-called pump rather than using electricity to convert whatever to hydrogen and then having refueling stations. Um, you can't charge this at home. Nobody wants a hydrogen, you know, equipment, and your in your home, whereas a wall box charger is, or whatever what whatever EV charger you have at home is far more efficient. So and people are yeah. worried about like you know Tesla Powerwalls or batteries, you know home storage batteries catching on fire because it's connected to people's homes. Um, here you've got you know nearly Hindenburg like equipment <laughs> that is ready to combust. Um, yeah, so I guess that's what's happening and. Uh, Toyota won't be happy with it. Someone mentioned, I think Ray mentioned that Mirai, you know, uh, mm. maybe they'll, they'll be converting them to EVs. Yeah, Fresh Off the Boat says, didn't even know if hydrogen was uh, hydrogen cars were for sale. Well, I think they are, but I think Riz, you'd have the stats on those uh, vehicles. Probably not very many have sold. I think they sold less than five last year. That was the Hyundai Nexo and the Toyota Mirai. So... Um, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but yeah, this, this is a pretty significant sort of a story around that as well, which means the viability is very low. Mm. And Nirav says they aren't for sale. I've talked with media reps, Toyota and Hyundai lease a free dozen Toyota, uh, sorry, total hydrogen cars across Australia. So mm. interesting. Uh, Gaffer says there's a hydrogen station in Wollongong, but can't find it. It's hidden deep in the steel plant and all the H comes from LPG steam reforming anyway. Mm. Yeah, it, it, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you're replacing one inefficient source for another, you know, 
doesn't make sense to me. All right, cool. Um, and just finally, um, I'll share this too. This is how inefficient uh, everything else is compared to electric cars. So uh, Sawyer says, for every dollar you put in, you get 20 cents worth of driving motion. Uh, other 80 cents is wasted. Whereas with EVs, uh, 67 cents out of the dollar is into driving and then 22 cents for regenerative braking. So quite a lot of energy you get for the dollar that you put in. So yeah, good to have that in stats as well and, and facts. Cool. All right. Uh, Riz, well, that might be it for tonight, I think. Let's get Raul back on real quick. Thank you so much, my friend, for uh, helping out tonight. Any key insights from the audience? Yeah, I think I think loads. Obviously, uh, Electrify Everything was huge. Um, the payment standard uh, for uh, charging infrastructure. But I think, you know, I kind of feel like that has to come from a federal level. It has to be mandated at a state level so that those charging companies can then actually put in that tap and go credit card, RFID, have all those options available. And I think loads of people obviously responded to the grid surf forecourt as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm heading to the UK in June as well. So yeah, would love to check out some of these sites as well. Um, and, and yeah, give, give some feedback as well um on these places yeah um but yeah i think i think looking looking backwards for us in terms of we're always behind the us uk by about 18 months i can see a site like that definitely happening yeah exactly well that would be so beautiful right driving down to melbourne or brisbane from sydney or to adelaide from melbourne having to sit there for half an hour like i would love that It'd be so comfortable i'd do more driving for sure uh, and we've got, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, comments for you, Rahul. Thanks, Rahul, for your hard work as executive producer tonight. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, Sensei saying, uh, where did he beam from? Yeah, he's the magic man. Here he is. <laughs> All right, gents. Well, uh, that might be it for tonight. So thank you once again, Riz from Carloop, for your time and insights. Awesome, Tom. Rahul, awesome work. Um, yeah, everyone, it's, 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 it's great to see. You know, I think this is a big show. It's good that everything electric has kicked things off for us for what this year holds there's many more brands about to launch more new cars i heard peugeot is launching two new models later this year um many uh, new countrymen's on its way so there's just so much more coming and it's exciting time to be part of this transition so keep spreading the good word on electric vehicles and not hydrogen ones <laughs> definitely not hydrogen Thank you, Rahul, for your hard work behind the scenes, mate. That was fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, gents. Well, that's it for tonight. And uh, we shall see you all next Wednesday for another fantastic show. Thanks, everyone. And as always, happy charging. Take care.